There are countless terminal-based calendar applications out there. Some of them really good, others not so much. But if you want something basically as minimal as you can get, literally only depending on the language it's written in being Perl and still being incredibly useful, how about you try an application by the name of when? So when you first run this application, pun not intended, it's going to ask you to set a couple of things. One of those being whether it can make a directory to store all of its data. Now, this directory can be mostly moved later on. You can't move the preferences file, so you actually end up having two folders in two separate places. In my case, because of that, I'm going to say yes, leave everything in the .when directory in my home directory, and then select the editor I want to use to actually modify the calendar. So in my case, I'm going to use NVim, but anything is going to work. Now, if you just go and run the when application with no options at all, it's going to just give you the date and the time. This isn't very useful. What you need to do is go and add stuff into the calendar. This is done by running when e. The absolute basic way to add something to the calendar is hard coding the date. This is done in the format year, then a month name. So I'm going to say April and then the number date. So I'm going to say the 20th, then comma, then the description or message, the name of the event that you want to be attached to this. So I'm going to say uh, this is for a video. If we go and now save this and then run the when command again, and it's going to show that we have an event in our calendar. Now these can be done basically as many times you want. So every single event is going to be one per line. So let's say we have all of these different events here. So now all of these, I guess 10 events are now going to show up when we go and run the when command. Now by default, it's going to show 14 days into the future and then one day into the past, but this can be configured. When I said I was hard coding the date, I said that because there are far more complex date operations available. So let's say I have something that happens every single year. So I could go and say, oh, this in 2022, this in 2023, this in 2024, something like, say, Christmas. So on December 25th, what I could do instead is replace the year with a star. So now every single time it rolls around that time of the year, it's going to go and automatically fill in whatever year should be there. Another yearly occurrence is a birthday. And if you're anything like me, you probably forget how old people actually are. So if we go and actually include the year, but this time it being the birth year, so in my case that being 1998, and then put a star on the end, then on April 9th, what this is going to do, why did I write Christmas? What this is going to do is give us access to a couple of variables. One of those being the dash A variable. This is basically the age of that event. So if we now go and save this and then run when, and we'll still keep the 365. So here it's gone and automatically put in, so here it's gone and automatically put in the number 25, but that's by no means all you can do. So let's say you wanna have something that happens every single Monday, for example. So W equals W equaling day of the week, and then setting that to mon, and let's say this is an event. So if we go and save this now, run when, as we can see, every time there's a Monday that event happens. But this also has access to sort of a logic language like most programming languages have access to. So you could do something like an event that happens every single Monday or every single Wednesday but only if the month is May, for example. Go and run this now. When, then we'll go into the future. Let's set this to be 50. Every single Monday and Wednesday in May now has this event. So to be specific, we have access to W equal the day of the week, M equals the month of the year, day equals the basically the date of the month, so something like the 20th, the 30th, so on and so forth, J equals being the modified Julian day, which is like Unix time, but something used by astronomers. A equals basically being the week of the month. So A equals one is the first seven days. A equals two is the second seven days, so on and so forth. 
then B is the same thing, but starting from the end of the month. So this is the last seven days, this is the second last seven days, so on and so forth. Then E equals is the days until Western Easter, and then Z equals is the days until the end of the year. Then for logic operators, you have basically what you'd expect to be here. So ampersand is and, pipe is or, we have brackets, and there's also math operators as well. So so plus, minus, and then the percent sign is going to be modulo. So once you've filled out your entire calendar, there's some other things that when can do. If we go and run when and then w, this will just show you things happening in the upcoming week. When and then m is going to be the upcoming month. And then when and y is going to be the upcoming year. When and c is going to show you a calendar. When and d is just going to show you the current date. And then when and j is just going to show you the Julian day. And then finally, when and i is just going to show you basically the same thing as running when by itself. But there's a very good reason why that exists. Because we can actually go and combine all of these options. So let's say I want to see everything happening in the upcoming month. And also I want to go and see the calendar. Now the order you include these is the order they're going to be shown. So in this case the month is going to be before the calendar. But in my case I probably want it the other way around. So I'm going to do it like this. Maybe I want to see what's happening in the upcoming week and also the upcoming month. And I also want to see something like the current date. So I can actually go and include all of those things, and I can actually include the same thing as many times as I want. So I can have basically an infinite number of calendars if I really want to. I don't recommend it, but it is an option that's available. So my suggestion to you then is take all of the letters you want to include. So in my case, it'd probably be something like C and then M, and then stick that into an alias. So every time you go and run that, it shows you the calendar in the form you want to see it. Now you could go and include things like the options available as well, but you don't actually have to do that because those can all be set inside of the config file. That config file is located inside of .when slash preferences. So by default, all it's going to have in here is the calendar location. So that's going to be inside of this directory as well. And then the editor you're using as well. So let's say you want to have the default future be set to... I don't know, 100 days, the default past to be set to, let's say, 10 days. And let's say you're one of the weird people who don't like Sunday being at the start of the week. We can go and set Monday underscore first to true. Now, in the man page, everything that is a true or a false value, it's going to say yes or no. Yes or no doesn't actually work. I don't know why it's like that. The documentation just was never updated. Maybe it was like that at one point. But make sure you use true and false instead. So if we go and save this now, run when and then C, it's going to show Monday being the start of the week. And then when by itself, it's showing all of these extra events. Now I should note there technically is some level of, not colouring, but some level of detail here to indicate, you know, what day you're currently on. So you probably can't see this because it's a really dumb decision. But by default, the current day you're on in your calendar is bold. My bold font and my regular font are so similar though, it's pretty much undetectable. To fix this, we have two separate options, which I was testing over in my other config. So calendar underscore today underscore style, which is the color of the date inside of the calendar, and then items underscore today underscore style, which is the color of any events that show up when you run something like when or when I. There's not much customization in the way of colors. We have access to the basic eight terminal colors, those being, I never remember them, black, red, green, yellow, blue, purple, cyan, and white. And these can be run as either a foreground or a background color. So in my case, I'm doing foreground cyan, then comma, and then you can have other things like bold, underline, or flashing. Flashing isn't gonna work in every single terminal and is terrible anyway, so please, don't use it. So we're going to keep this as foreground sign. Let's also add in uh, BG and then red. So if we go and save this now and run when C. Now the background color is red and the foreground is cyan. I don't really like the look of that. I kind of just like the foreground color by itself. But it does give you some level of freedom. And that's it for the main functionality. I would highly recommend going and reading the man page. There's not a lot of stuff in here that's going to go and fundamentally change how the application functions, but it will change sort of 
basic things about the workflow, like if you want to have 24-hour time instead of AM and PM, if you want to have things like Orthodox Easter, if you don't want to show the neighboring month in the calendar, all of these things are useful to configure. But for Debian-based systems, Gen 2, FreeBSD, ZenWalk, and Slackware, you can save yourself for like 30 or so seconds and just install it with your package manager. So if you're looking for an incredibly powerful and incredibly customizable calendar, CalCurse is probably the best thing out there. Without a doubt, CalCurse is an incredible application. But if you want something really, really basic that still does everything a calendar needs to do, when might at least be worth giving a shot? So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, selling barrel pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.